Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. Optics has always been an important part of the practice of Starfish Medical. We find it in diagnostic type applications, imaging. Uh, we find it in therapeutic type applications. And we also find it in biotech applications. So if you're involved in any of those aspects in your project, I'm sure you'll get a lot of uh, interesting tips and insights that come out of watching these presentations. I'm Brian King. I'm Principal Optical Systems Engineer at Starfish Medical. Um, I've got a background in laser physics, laser spectroscopy, measuring single atoms using a variety of technologies, uh, all the way from the mid-infrared all the way to the deep ultraviolet. So one thing that I've found useful uh, when I'm doing breadboard prototyping and taking measurements is to remember that the universe is much cleverer than me. And so if I'm getting a result that I'm not expecting when I'm in the lab, it's not that the experiment isn't working, that the test is broken. It's that I haven't been clever enough to think about what it's actually measuring. But keeping that in mind, usually you can get to the root cause of unexpected results a lot faster and maybe learn something along the way. My name is Ryan Field. I'm an optical engineer here at Starfish for the last couple of years. Before you're coming here, I have a background in ultrafast laser spectroscopy, which is a method of uh, measuring changes in the optical properties of materials on very short timescales. And I also did some work uh, working with surgical laser systems and surgical microscopes. Optical breadboarding, which is basically uh, taking our optical system or subsystem and building that up on an optical table, is a great way of doing proof of concept testing or uh, looking at the performance of an individual optical subsystem. And when we do those kinds of measurements, we have a lot of control over uh, how they're done. So we can look at uh, reducing vibration using a vibration isolating table. We can block out any uh, ambient, no uh, ambient light sources if we need to. We can control the temperature and humidity in the environment. Um, and we can also keep our optics clean, which often just means not getting them dirty. Uh, but as we move into a real medical device, additional considerations become important. So first of all, we have to consider how our optical system is going to interact with the rest of the device. Uh, we have to think about what the ambient conditions, the ambient light conditions will be like in, uh, in the setting where this will be used and if they'll be variable over time. Uh, we need to think about, is this device going to interact with any fluids? And if so, how is that going to affect our measurement? And uh, we also need to think about uh, how we're going to build the device in such a way that it can be kept clean and sterile between uses. So when we're doing optical breadboarding, that's a great way of telling us what's possible. Um, but at the same time, we recognize that that's just the first step in terms of uh, testing uh, a device which is eventually going to be used in, uh, in a clinical setting. My name is Scott Parsons. I work at Starfish Medical. I'm the mechanical engineering team lead for the Toronto office. One of the challenges in mounting lenses is dealing with thermal expansion. The lens itself will typically be a material with high rate of expansion uh, thermally, something like glass. Uh, the mount will have a lower rate of expansion, being steel, aluminum, or invar. Invar is a, a material that's used in optics because of its low rate of expansion over the heat range. The problem that is faced is when the outside mount is, is made of low expansion material and the glass is expanding faster. Uh, when heated up, there's the potential for the glass to expand beyond the, the mount and crack. The design solution for this is by creating a proper gap between the lens and the mount. This is achieved with the adhesive gap between the two. In looking at this adhesive gap, it is important to, to maintain the distance so that we would never have a situation that, where the lens cracks, but also considering the relative stiffness of the system. If vibration is in, introduced, we do not want uh, resonance to occur with that adhesive and the lens, and thereby shaking the image. So, calculations need to be done to maintain uh, the proper stiffness of this, but also ensuring that we have room to grow throughout the temperature range. 
An important thing to remember when approaching an optical system design is that good enough is good enough. Sometimes there can be a temptation to design the perfect optical system or the perfect measurement system, but you need to keep in mind what your requirements are and do sufficient engineering and design to reach those requirements and give yourself a little bit of tolerance margin, uh, but not spend uh, unnecessary time and effort designing the perfect device. What you need is not the perfect device, but the device that meets the product needs. Uh, doing an analysis of a simplified version of an optical system is a good thing to do in the early stages of developing such a system, uh, as it uh, basically gives us a way to look at the essential functionality of the device without going into detailed design. So essentially what we'll do in this case is conceptualize the device as a small number of optical components and do either paper-based analysis or simulation uh, to um, understand at a high level how we expect our device to function. Uh, so one case where this has come in useful for me was I was working on uh, looking at a device uh, for a client uh, with the aim of trying to reduce the cost of goods inside the device as well as improve its manufacturability. Uh, and it was clear just from looking at a simplified version of uh, a new concept that we had for the design which was enabled by some new components that came on the market, it was already clear that we could replace about a dozen components in the device with just one optic and reduce it from having multiple optical paths to having a single optical path. So before we even went into detailed design, it was already clear just from that simplified analysis that we would be able to reduce the cost of goods for this device and also make it much more simple to manufacture. Another thing to keep in mind when designing an optoelectronic system in your medical device is don't over-engineer. Keep in mind the product requirements and specifications and design a system that can meet those requirements with sufficient margin to allow for repeatability in manufacturing. If you'd like to know more about Starfish, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've developed hundreds of devices for companies all over the industry, and we've helped many founders become very successful and have big clinical impacts. That's what we really love for. So enjoy the content. If you'd like to talk to us about your project, we'd be happy to talk. Thank you.